All right, so I am here with my August wrap-up. I'm just going to talk about the books that I read in August and what I thought about them, and I'm going to talk about them in the order that I read them, which means I'm going to start with a book I read in July, because I forgot to talk about that one in my July wrap-up. <laughs> Now, the reason that I forgot to talk about it was because I listened to it on audio and I, I didn't think of it because I just, I don't know. I, I have a physical copy of it. It was an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green that I have already, I've read this physically and I wanted to do a reread and I decided to do that by listening to it. Have someone read it to me while I wash the dishes and make supper. Sounds fair. I gave it five out of five stars the first time I read it and I gave it five out of five stars. The second time I read it, I didn't love it quite as much by listening to it, mostly just because I didn't like the narrator. I f listened to it at 1.5 speed and that made it much more enjoyable. I still wasn't a huge fan, although I did really like the way that she read Miranda. I thought she did- Miranda was great. She did a great job of Miranda. Every single time she spoke it made me smile. The fact that it was at 1.5 speed might have helped that. <laughs> um, but in case nobody knows what an absolutely remarkable thing is about, it's about a girl named April May who comes across this statue in the middle of New York City at two o'clock in the morning and it, she's never seen it before and so she calls her friend who's been trying to make it on YouTube and they make a video about the statue and they just, they just make a silly video of them interviewing it and they call it Carl. And the next day, all, the same statue, there's like hundreds of them that have popped up all over the world. Hundreds? Sixty? I forget. But there are a lot of them that have shown up in countries all over the world. They all showed up at the exact same time. There's a whole bunch of videos of them. But April and her friend's video gets the most views and then she basically becomes famous overnight. And it's about two things. About It's about her and the way she deals with her sudden and growing fame. And it's also about the fact that these Carls are probably aliens. And it's fabulous. It's so good. It's funny. It's weird. It's mind-blowing. It's weirdly comforting in weird ways. Like, there's things that happen in it that I can, like, imagine happening to me and... Like, I don't even know how to describe it without sounding weird or giving things away from the story. But it's super weird and wonderful and amazing and I love it so much. And I'm so glad that I decided to reread it and listen to it. Now into the actual books that I read in August. Um, the first book that I read was Volume 1 of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, which I adored. I flew through this, gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was so adorable. Couldn't even- I can't handle- I can't handle the cuteness. It's so cute. Um... It's very simple. It's in like these greens. It's very, very cute. Um, I feel like this is actually like a really, really good like starter graphic novel. If you're, if you've never read any comics or graphic novels and you want to get into it, but you're not sure if you'll like it or be able to follow it really easily. I feel like this is a really, really great starting point. It's just laid out really simply. It's really easy to follow and it's so cute. It's so cute. And it's just about two boys who are friends who have crushes on each other and are afraid to tell the other one that they have a crush on the other one. And it's adorable. So the next book that I read in August was Rune and Rising by Lee Bardugo, which I can't say much about because it's the third and final book in a trilogy. Uh, but it's the third book in the Grishaverse trilogy or the Shadow and Bone trilogy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I wasn't a huge fan of it in the first little chunk, but I think mostly the reason I wasn't a huge fan of the first chunk was because I didn't remember anything from the second book, and I had no idea what was happening. And then I looked up a summary of what happened, and then I was caught up, and then I was really enjoying it, and I loved Nikolai. Nikolai is my baby. I love him so very much. And you know, before finishing the series, I had no interest in reading the spin-off series about Nikolai, but now, like, I don't even know what it's about. Except that Nikolai is in it and I want it. That is that. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And I tabbed some things. This is a new me. Tabbing books. What? Next book I read was not on my August TBR, but it was on my Scallywagathon TBR, if you saw that. 
which was the only book that I did end up reading from the Scallywagathon, but whatever. I read one of them, and that was The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli, which is, it's good that this is the one that I did end up reading because this was the book that I chose for literally all of the challenges except for one. So... <laughs> This is a companion novel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and I really like this. I gave this four stars. It might be four and a half. It was really cute. I just, it just gave me all the happy feels. It was just, it was so gushy and warm, and it just, it was great. And then, you know, I might, I might have liked it better than Simon, but I can't be sure, because I read Simon a few years ago. This is fresher in my brain and my heart. It's possible that they're equal, but I don't know. I might have liked it better than Simon. And I would really like to read Leah on the offbeat really soon, because it's probably going to be great, just like this one and Simon was. So there you go. Um, if you don't know what this is about, this is about a girl who has had like 26 crushes on guys, which I'm going to say her definition of a crush is that boy is cute, <laughs> but she's like in grade 10 or grade 11 or whatever. So whatever. She can call him crushes if she wants. Anyone she thinks is cute is considered a crush to her. And she's never had a boyfriend. She's never been kissed. Any of that stuff. And it's about her sister who's just gotten her first girlfriend. Her sister's trying really hard to include her and help her get a boyfriend. And so while her sister is trying to get a boy to like her so that he could become her boyfriend. She's currently crushing on this other boy and it's just very cute and sweet and it's just a, it's just an overall good time if you're looking for a cutesy little romantic teen read. And then I tried to read multiple books, couldn't get into any of them, didn't want to read any of them, didn't want to read anything. They were either too dark or disturbing or I just wasn't feeling it. I just decided no more trying to read any books, except for it, that I read this graphic novel, <laughs> which is Courtney Crumrin, Volume 1, The Night Things. is technically a comic bind-up, but whatever. <laughs> this is about a girl who's in grade 7, I want to say, although her friends seem to be way older than that. It seems like she's in high school, but she's not. Moves to a new town into this old creepy house with her uncle because he's super old and he needs help being taken care of, except he doesn't actually need help being taken care of. He wants people to think that he needs help being taken care of. He wants to be forgettable because he's actually this, like, sorcerer guy. <laughs> And so Courtney ends up learning a bunch of, like, witchcraft and things about magical creatures. There's, like, this werewolf-type thing involved, and she casts spells, and it's a good time. It was good. And it was, like, dark, but not super dark. Like, it was spooky, and I really like the artwork. Like, it's cute dark. Like, it's dark but cute. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four to five stars. And then I didn't read anything for the last week and a half of August. And it was a really good decision. I have no idea what I want to read in September. Um, I'm probably not going to post a September TBR. I'm just going to be mood reading probably. Well, I did start listening to another audiobook. I started listening to Radio Silence. And I chose that one specifically because I have heard that its audiobook is really, really good. It's one of those books where, like, you have to listen to it on audio because it's amazing and it's just not the same as reading it physically. And it's just an it's just an audiobook. It's just a girl reading me a story. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really into it and I'm not sure if I would be more into it if I read it physically or if I just am not really big on just people reading me stories, even though an absolutely remarkable thing was literally someone just reading me a story. But I've already read that story. Anyway, it was, it's not blowing me away. I'm not feeling like I need to continue listening to it. I'm not sure if I'm going to want to keep going. I'm not very far into it. I'm on like chapter six or something, but I also feel like I've been listening to it for a super long time and I'm not even that far into it. So I don't know. I mean, I used an audible credit for it. So <laughs> let me know if you think I should keep listening to it or if you think maybe I would like the physical copy better. If I would like just reading it myself better, you can let me know in the comments if you like. And that's all for now. Have a good day.